Just because it's summer doesn't mean the learning has to end. In fact, this is a great time to get creative with your homeschooling. Welcome friends to the Raising Arrows podcast where we talk all things large family homeschooling and homemaking. Hello friends, welcome to the Raising Arrows podcast. I'm Amy Roberts from RaisingArrows.net and this is episode number 147, how to turn your vacation into an education. Now this is on my heart right now because we are getting ready to take our annual trek to the mountains with all of the kids and stuff ourselves into a tiny cabin. But most of the time we just enjoy the great outdoors and only have to sleep inside the cabin at night. But often as we make the trek out to the cabin, we actually do a lot of things that would be considered homeschooling. So I wanna share with you some ideas from our own family and from others' experiences of how to take a vacation that actually is somewhat of an education that keeps that homeschooling going and does something that often seat work can't do for your children. And that is to put a hands-on component to it that really makes it stick in their little heads. So let's talk about how you can make this summer a summer of homeschooling that the kids don't even realize is homeschooling. They're still going to consider this a vacation and you will too. But first, I want to share with you that this episode of the Raising Arrows podcast is sponsored by Squeaver Tails. This is a brand new product to me, and I'm excited to introduce it to you. So stay tuned. We'll be talking more about it in the middle of the podcast. One of the first things I would encourage you to do is look around for museums and stops that you can make along the way to your destination. A lot of times we are so caught up in going from point A to point B that we miss a lot of the wonderful things that are in between. And this was the case for our family until several years ago when something major happened in our lives that changed the way that we saw life in general and particularly vacations. Back in 2008, after we lost our daughter Emily, our vacation changed. We wanted to do more as a family, but we also wanted to slow down. We'd always been pretty good with family first activities and enjoying things as a family, but we realized that we were sort of racing through life and we were missing these little moments. And so on our trip that year, we decided to stop at every single historical marker and we stopped at a museum as well. It was the first time any of us had ever stopped at this museum. We had seen it for years because we traveled the same way every single year. My husband had even seen it when he was younger and traveled that same route, but none of us had ever stopped. None of us had ever taken the time because we were too busy getting from point A to point B. We just didn't have the time to stop at some random museum. But after our daughter passed away, we were taking things a lot slower, breathing in life, enjoying life together, because we realized how short and sweet those moments had been with her. So we stopped at this museum that was along the way, and it turned out to be a fantastic experience. A few years later, we stopped at another museum in this little tiny town, and the museum was totally free, and it had a scavenger hunt that was really fun for the kids, and we would never have stopped at that previously. The kids still talk about that trip, by the way. They still ask if we can stop at that museum again, and we do plan on stopping there very soon again, because it was just such a fun experience. Experience. We did that a few years later. We stopped at another small town museum. Literally every single small town has their own museum, and typically those museums are free. And they have lots of not only local history, but they also have a lot of history that has to do with the area. So you actually have a chance to teach your children some history. There's science mixed in. A lot of times there's some fun little activities that the museum has put together that your kids can do. All of this on the way out to your destination at little to no cost. Another thing I'd encourage you to do, which I mentioned a little bit earlier when I was talking about that museum we stopped at, 
is to stop at those historical markers. Usually they are on the side of the road with a little bit of a pull off for you to be able to move over out of traffic and read the sign. A lot of times we'll pull over alongside the road and my husband or I will roll down the window, we'll read it off to the kids in a loud voice and we'll talk about what we know about that area and Google anything we don't know so that we're learning as we're going. It literally takes a minute or two to get off the highway, read the sign and get back on. But that continues that educational learning experience and something that your children wouldn't otherwise be exposed to. And even if you did nothing else except stop at those historical markers, you have done something that a lot of families never do. So take that time. And speaking of time, that is really the key here. You have to build in extra time to your vacation. And that is where people get kind of hung up about things. They don't want to build in that extra time. They don't want to take more time getting from point A to point B. I know that's how my husband grew up. He told me that he and his dad would get up really early in the morning and drive and drive and drive until they got to their destination, barely stopping to go to the bathroom or eat. His dad had no interest in stopping at anything extra extra. He didn't even really want to stop to go to the bathroom or eat. He just wanted to get to where he was going. But as I said, we realized after our daughter's death that that was no way to live our lives. We really needed to slow down everything. And that included the time it took to get out to the place that we were vacationing. So many of the beautiful, wonderful memories that we now have that have to do with our vacations is because we took the time, we slowed down, we did something different, we took a different road, we stopped at a historical marker. All of that stuff takes time, but I can attest to the fact that all of it is worth it. There is a little place that we pull off to let our dogs run. And a lot of times we'll go and eat there as well. We'll have a little picnic. It is such a neat little place, but we would never have found it had we not just stopped and said, you know what, we're not gonna eat in the car this time. We're gonna get out, we're gonna picnic, and we're going to enjoy this little park area. It has a lot of historical significance. There's lots of little signs and there's even a walking path. We would never have noticed that if we had been so busy getting from point A to point B, even so much as, you know, eating in the car and hurrying, hurrying, hurrying. We stopped, we had a picnic, we enjoyed what we saw and what we found on our trip there. And so those kinds of things you need to add in time for. You need to recognize that this kind of education on your vacation is going to take time and you have to be willing to give it that time. And I know that sometimes, especially with kids, if you take a little bit of time, you end up having to spend more money to stay in a hotel or stay in a park somewhere because it was not what you had planned on and you didn't get out to point B fast enough. And so now you're spending money because time is money. I realize that if you can rework how you do your vacation, if you can just choose one thing to do as you are going about your destination drive, if you could do that, and try not to spend too much time there. Give yourself a time allowance, even if it's just 30 minutes to stop and go to that free museum that's on the side of the road that you keep saying someday we're gonna stop there. Do it, take the time, do it. Spend an hour, spend 30 minutes, whatever it is that you can afford and do it now. These are the moments that you have to seize. These are the times where homeschooling just spills out into your everyday life and you've got to grab onto those. These are the moments that your kids are going to remember. Don't allow your fears and your stresses and all of that to take over. Just get out there and do it. Now, if you Don't feel like you can take any sort of time whatsoever. I have another idea for you, and that is to grab some brochures, some read alouds, some maps, things that go along with the path that you are following. 
Almost every single gas station out there has some sort of brochure about the area that you're in. So grab those up, read from those aloud to your kids while you're driving. Choose a story to bring along with you on your journey that maybe has something to do with what you're doing on vacation. So for instance, if you're going to a national park, try to find a storybook that's about that national park. Or maybe there's a historical figure who had something to do with the place that you are going. Grab a storybook about them and read that to your children on the drive there. Use that time that you are in the vehicle together, really not doing a whole lot other than driving, to share that information, to share that educational experience with your kids you may find yourself incredibly surprised by what they retain. And then when you're out there on your vacation, you start to see those little connections being made where they're like, oh, that town was mentioned or that person in that statue was mentioned. I remember that. So it's a really good way to use that idle time while you are driving. Now, at the top of this podcast, I mentioned Squeaver Tales, and you may be wondering, what is that? Well, let me share with you this adventure chapter book that kids will love and parents can trust. Squeaver Tales is about a fun and friendly half squirrel, half beaver who has been bullied and made fun of for being different, but despite this has chosen to be kind. The book teaches the dangers of isolation, separating ourselves from others, and the need for a community and authentic connections. It teaches kids to be real with their emotions and remove their masks and be vulnerable and open with healthy people. There are no manipulative or hidden agendas in this book. It is written by a Christian author from a Christian worldview with many fun and uplifting and encouraging moments. It is super important in our day and age to teach our children the importance of community, of fellowship with other believers, and that's what Squeaver Tales teaches. It's available on Amazon on paperback and ebook. It also has a full production audiobook, which would be perfect for your family vacation this summer. Again, the name of the book is Squeaver Tales, and I will have the link for you in the show notes, as well as a link to a free Squeaver Tales coloring book that you can download for your kids. And that leads me into another idea while you are taking your vacation is to use that idle time, not only to read and look at brochures and maps, but to also put in an audio book, put in an audio drama, something that your children can listen to while you are driving. It will keep them entertained and it will also be something that is educational to them. I firmly believe that any longer road trip ought to include audio dramas or audio books. Our children have listened to hundreds of hours worth of information that they still have retained to this day because of those family vacations where we were listening as we drove. Something else you might want to consider is buying guides that go along with whatever it is you are going to be doing on vacation. Perhaps you're going to the mountains like we are. You could buy a nature guide that goes along with the mountains, particularly for that area. This is an opportunity for them to get some science in them. Nature guides are fantastic. There are so many different ones out there. Even if you just bought a field guide for the birds or the insects or the mushrooms of the area. There are so many different ways that you can spin this. Think about the things that you see when you are on vacation. And even if you are just going to a water park, buy a guide on water. There is all kinds of information that your children may not know that would be fantastic scientific information for them to learn about water as you are getting ready to go to the water park. That's one of those places I'm sure a lot of parents are like, oh, that's what we're doing with our vacation and it's not very educational, but guess what? It is. If you learn about water and then you swim in the water, you have done something that a lot of parents have not done. And it is a fantastic opportunity to teach your children in a low key way. And that's something I do wanna stress here. I realize it's your vacation too. And you don't wanna necessarily be thinking about putting together lessons and plans. The things I'm suggesting here are not really lesson plan based. They are not something that you have to plan extensively for. They are as simple as picking up a book, grabbing a nature guide, looking at a map, 
putting in a CD, very, very simple things. And speaking of maps, it is a great opportunity for your kids to look at either a paper map or a map app. This is a great time for your kids to learn how to navigate, learn what it looks like on the map, teach them how to figure out how far things are, teach them the different symbols on the map. My kids like to pass around a paper map, but I also pass around my own phone for them to look at the map on my phone and it's just been a really great way for them to not only pass the time but also to understand area landmarks and how maps work. I don't know about you but when I was a fourth grader I believe we had to take a class in map skills. It was part of the curriculum. I don't know if they do that anymore in public schools but I think it is still a really good skill to have. Even though we often have our phones tell us exactly how to get from point A to point B, there are times when the maps don't work on your phone. You either don't have good enough cell reception or there's a glitch and your kids need to know how to read the signs that are on the road. They need to be aware of their surroundings. And that is something that I think has been detrimental with having DVDs in the car. We have learned to entertain our children while we drive. And I realize that sometimes kids can get loud and unruly in the car and it's just a stressful thing but they have lost the ability to look around their world and learn more about their world as you're driving. They've lost that. And I think it's time that even if you just take 30 minutes and point out things along the side of the road, you are far ahead in giving them skills and understanding about the world around them. One of the games that we play as we are driving out to the mountains is who can see the first mountain. We look for different wildlife that we know are out there, but we don't live in an area where they live. And so whoever can spot that first animal. As we drive from one state to the next, we say goodbye to the last state and hello to the next state. We notice different names of roads and landmarks and cities. We share with our kids the stories all down through the years that we have been traveling this same road. We share the different stories and it is an education for them that they would not get if we were simply putting in a DVD and letting them watch endless amounts of TV from here to the next destination. So I get it if you need a break, but please try to take 30 minutes, an hour here and there and converse with your children and read to your children and share their surroundings with them. Help them to be aware of the world that God has created. Point out the wildflowers, point out the hay bales, point out the animals, point out all the different things that are in their world. It is very, very important for these little minds to explore the world at large. And then one last thing that I would suggest you do that is very simple is to eat and explore like the locals. This has been something that my husband has been really big on for years and years. He does not like to eat at chain restaurants if we can help it. And so he likes to ask the locals, where do you eat? Where do you prefer to go? What's the local hangout? What do locals like to do? Recently, we had the most hilarious experience that we cannot wait to share with our kids. We were river rafting, and the couple who was taking the photos for the river rafting, they invited us and our children to come to bingo at this little bitty town. They said, oh, it is so much fun. You've got to bring the kids. It's like 25 cents a card. They'll have so much fun. So we are really excited to share this thing that the locals do. That's what the locals do. That's not what the average vacation does when they come to this area. They're not going to play bingo, but we're going to take our kids and we're going to go play bingo with these people who live there because it's what the locals do. We talked to them more about their suggestions for food, places to shop. They told us about a neat little Amish warehouse that we could go to. I am so looking forward to that as well. There were just all these little nuggets of information that you only know if you live there and nobody tells you unless you ask. 
So again, this doesn't take extra time. This is something that when you get there, you find a local, you grab them and you ask them a question. Where do you guys like to go shop? Where do you like to eat? What's something you think is really unique about your town that we ought to see? And it might be one of those really inexpensive museums. It might be something out in the country, some landmark that nobody knows about except the locals. There are so many really great treasures that people gloss over when they're vacationing because, again, trying to get from point A to point B, but they're also like just there for the water park or they're just there for the amusement park or they're just there for these few things that they planned out in their itinerary and they didn't even know about all these other treasures out there. So be sure to ask a local what you might be missing when you just go there for a couple of days and you do the vacationing thing. What would they suggest? What ideas might they have? I think they will actually be very thrilled to share their town with you and share with you some of the things that they enjoy. So no matter where you are vacationing at this summer, even if it is just in the area that you are living in, turn it into an education with these few simple tips. You will not be disappointed. You will be making memories and you will be continuing that homeschooling education through the summer and your children won't even know and you won't even have to do any lesson plans. Friends, don't forget to check out Squeaver Tales. If you go to SqueaverTales.com, you will find the coloring book that is free of charge. And then follow that on over to Amazon to get the paperback or the ebook. And also check out that audiobook for your vacation this summer. All of those links will be down below in the show notes. And until next time, I'm Amy with the Raising Arrows podcast, and I hope you have a blessed summer.